And good morning, race fans. Welcome here to Lime Rock Park for the running of the Lime Rock Park Grand Prix for the PCSRA Foster Series. These drivers are ready to go after a long break in between races. We're glad to bring these drivers back in action. It is 20, uh, we have 20 um, minutes on the clock. And there is our first driver on track. That is the number five of CJ Bracken. Back in the HendrickCars.com colors this week on his Chevy Camaro. CJ Bracken won a couple of weeks ago, won two races ago back at Pocono. As he is currently inside the top 10 in the point standings. Coming to this race six in the points after he lost two spots last time out at the Michigan International Raceway. This is a 1.53 mile road course and we have 20 minutes of qualifying here today. Hope everybody had a great start to 2023. So have I as of this recording. Only 36 charter teams, so nobody goes home. All 36 charter teams will race this afternoon. Qualifying being up very early this morning. Look out, William Davis nearly pulled out into CJ. Last two weeks, Hendrick Motorsports has been the victory lane, or last two races rather. Uh, CJ Bracken who won at Pocono and then last time out, when we were last with you for the Foster Series, Kyle Langland went to victory lane. Langland has moved himself all the way up to seventh in points. Some of these drivers have already got lap times on the board. That's because their pit stalls were behind the start finish line. So they've already registered a lap, but the next time by they come around will be their first official time lap like CJ Bracken did, a 58-2-3. As CJ Bracken, can you make sure to turn that music down? Okay. As long as you didn't, don't get me copyrighted, we're good. But anyway, uh, CJ Bracken in the five car comes into this race, as I said, six in the points as Chase Brooks went quickest. Shane Lake in second, Noah Platts in third. And now Scarlett Wallace is quicker. Got some new paint schemes this week. There's Ian Griffith in the 47. Ian Griffith comes in this race 16th in the point standings. Jared Underhill running the King's Hawaiian Colors on his Ford Mustang out of RFK Racing. Jared Underhill has had a really rotten start to the season. 24th in the point standings is where that number six comes. There's Daniel Witter, just came out of the pits in the Root Toyota. As Jared Underhill took the corner a little too wide, we'll see a lot of that here today as Cody McGorvick's on track. Last time out at Michigan was a race weekend to forget for the 2311 racing cars. As Cody McGorvick comes into this race 21st in the point standings. Sean Art, who has yet to go to victory lane, 25th in the points. As he's currently following Jessica Shelton and Quentin Moore. Quentin Moore running the Loves Colors on his number 34. Human has had... Human is 14th in the point standings. He is currently on the bubble as far as the playoff drivers is concerned. He would be seated 15th right now. So the playoff standings as of right now, if I look at the playoff standings, they would be Noah Platts, uh, or actually Emmanuel Hartnett, Jesse Art, CJ Bracken, Kyle Langland, and David Heller. Those five have wins. They're all inside the top 30 in points, meaning their wins will count towards the spot in the playoffs as we had a wreck on the front straightaway. Hold that thought for just a second. We had a wreck on the front straightaway and I saw black smoke. Yep, right there. We have black smoke. Something tells me we've had an incident that we, that I'll, I'll get back to the playoff standings in just a second. 
all the three cars in it, Shane Lake, as of his season, can't get any wars. Oh, Chase Brooks. We had a wreck coming off the final corner, and looks like the three turned to 15 into the tire wall. And a lot of damage to the three and the 15, and they had good qualifying spots as a result. And now because of this, they will have to go to a backup car and will have to start the rear of the field and lose all that track position that they had. That's not good for those drivers. Now back to Quentin Moore, as I was saying before that incident happened. Um, of course, uh, Hartnett, um, Jesse Art, uh, CJ Bracken, Kyle Langland, and David Heller, they're in via wins. Drivers who would be in on points as of now entering this race is Noah Platts, the points leader, Cody Smart, who's third in points, Kaylee Rankin, fifth in the point standings, Jaleesia Kiersman, Kate Anderson, Heather Gallant, William Davis, Nathan Orman, Paul Minnick, Quentin Moore, and Ian Griffith. Zachary Taylor came in this race 10 points outside the cut line as far as trying to get in the playoffs. Scarlett Wallace, as of now, has the fastest time. Where is that 41? There she is. Run by Carla Sanat in the 42. Scarlett Wallace comes in this race 34th in the point standings. Has not had a good season. And SHR has not been to victory lane this season. Let's see here. I'm going to check to see. Hartnett has won a pole, and he went to victory lane. This would be the second pole, because Fitzy didn't win a pole in the four. Hartnett's won a pole. Allison Liera has not won a pole. So this would be the second pole for Stuart Haas Racing as of right now. Now Nathan Orman goes quickest. Ormy was quickest in practice yesterday. You didn't see practice live because I didn't do practice live. Nathan Orman running the Exalted Colors on his Chevy Camaro out of Hendrick Motorsports. Ormy comes in this race 12th in the point standings. He's one of the 16 drivers if the playoffs were to begin today, to be into the playoffs. As, oh, we got a crash. The 16 is around. That's Paul Minnick. And he got he got turned got collected by the 77. Looks like he just scraped the wall. Boy, who was that that just nearly hit the 16? That was Allison. Allison Liera did a good job missing the 16 car. Nathan Norman did as well. Paul Menick has gotten going again. That final corner is going to be a problem here this weekend. And speaking of Emmanuel Hartnett, he comes into this race as the defending winner of this event. He won when we were here last time at Lime Rock Park. Did I see some smoke from somebody? Doesn't look like it. I thought I saw some smoke from Jaleesia Kuzman on her 77. But doesn't look like there is. And they've taken that car to the garage. They're going to get it repaired. As Sam Davis just ran wide, now he's in the wall. That's a backup car. I didn't see drivers running wide, so Sam Davis will have to start the rear of the field. That's a tough break for Sammy. 
Sammy Davis, where did he originally qualify? 12. Oh boy, he's going to have to start the rear of the field along with Chase Brooks and Shane Lake. Boy, if anything couldn't go wrong, wrong for Shane Lake this season, it has gone horribly wrong. There's Chase Brooks. Remember, he'll have to start at the rear of the field in a backup car. That's not good for, uh, for them. So Sam Davis will go to a backup car because he clipped the end of the guardrails. And he was supposed to start 14th. So that means Zachary Fitzwater will be moving up some spots. There's Nathan Orman, who is still the fastest, as we are halfway through this session. Boy, what a wild start to the season it's been for Nathan Orman. Had some very good runs at the beginning of the year. End up missing Dover after he tested positive for COVID-19. Last couple of races got got involved in an incident at Pocono through no fault of his own and had an okay result last time out at um, Michigan. Hopefully with this break, it's given Ormy a chance to regroup. Hendrick Motorsports has been on a roll the last couple of weeks. Or in the last couple of races, not last couple of weeks. Excuse me there. But either way, Nathan Orman, you know, you know, a former Monster Energy Series champion, of course, in ironically enough, the 24. I mean, no surprise Nathan Orman is driving the 24 for obvious reasons. But in all seriousness, you know, Ormy knows how to win a championship in this series. And, you know, for, you know, for him to come here, the Fosters, you know, this is the only series he has never run for Rookie of the Year before. Fosters, that is. And, you know, he is, of course, the reason he's driving the 24 is, of course, he's a 100 fan one to his number is 24. But that's besides the point. Ormy knows... To win a championship, you just got to go through a interesting season, you know. I mean, oh well if you have a bad race. I mean, yeah, he had a couple of bad races, but I mean, he is super consistent. Like I said, you know, comes in his race 12th on the points, would like to get himself inside the top 10 in the point standings, leaving today and heading into next week's race. Which reminds me, I still need to write the schedule down for... Foster, so I know where we're going next week. Instead of me having a look at Discord. As he, as my roommate's playing music, and I'm going to go smack him if he doesn't shut his damn door. Please shut your door. I'm not going to tell you again. It's going to get me copyright, and then I have to delete the video. have to redo qualifying because someone don't listen to a damn word I say. Apologize for that, y'all. When my roommate doesn't listen and gives you the freaking finger, it's getting annoying. Okay, there we go. Finally, someone got their, somebody got their attention, if you ask me. There's Caleb Hobbs running a new paint scheme on his 78. Currently 34th quickest. But, with those three drivers that have to go to the rear of the field, he's going to start 31st. So, and let's, let's not forget, drivers get, are going to get a little confused about the starting grade. Remember, the pole sitter will be starting to drivers, to drivers left. Because remember, if we end up having pit stops, these drivers are pitting backwards. Instead of going to right side tires, 
on your pit stop, you would start the lefts and then go all the way to the rights. Like, like on an oval, you go rights and lefts. There's Zachary Fitzwater, 21st quickest, but he would start 18th for the race today. Fitzwater is still planning on what series he would like to bring Annie Thomas back. And if I have a good suggestion for Fitzwater, bring Annie Thomas back to the NRSL so that way Annie Thomas can go flip the bird at Dylan Young, if you know what I mean. As Fitzwater ran off the course. Um, also, I got an announcement to make uh, while we are coming down the second. Uh, Samet Ozkan will be making his non-charter debut starting next week because I have booted Con uh, Connor Breton from that ride. Of course, Connor only made... Or no, no, because the 79 has not made a start. So Samet Ozkan will be making his Foster's debut. Will be in the 79... Uh, he's not racing here this weekend or in next weekend's deal because we're going to have non-charter qualifying uh, for the Foster Series. So just giving you guys a bit of a heads up here. Scarlett Wallace went a little quicker but not quick enough to beat the Exalta Chevrolet out of Hendrick Motorsports. Also, I need to throw a little disclaimer. If your name is in the description, uh, there is a little complaint I need to give you uh, because there has been a little issue I've been seeing on Discord the last couple of weeks, and it's regarding to the person in that 18. Um, when I say this is only... I'm only using real teams. That does not mean use Indiana Motorsports, you darp. So to the certain person in the 18, please quit saying Indiana Motorsports has a team in the series because they don't. And I'm using real team names, you darp. And you know who I'm referring to. I'm referring to you right here. Of course, Zachary Taylor in the Eternal M colors. And uh, I'm going to say this. If he does it again with the, um, with the uh, Indiana Motorsports, he will be sent to the back of the grid because it's getting a bit annoying for me seeing that crap, especially when... One, these are real teams like Penske, JGR, RWR, Hendrick, etc. As uh, Scarlett Wallace took the pole position from Nathan Orman by 19th by 2100s. But it's getting a bit annoying when you say Indiana Motorsports owns the team in Fosters when they don't. So if you do it again, the driver of the 18, you'll be sent to the back of the grid for the next race. And if you throw an argument, I have the power to eject you from that ride. So just give me a little FYI. So, yes. Again, if your name is in the description, please quit saying Indiana Motorsports owns a team in Foster's. So... Just going to leave it there. There's Scarlett Wallace, our pole sitter. She and Nathan Orman, as things stand, would be on the front row. Oh, we got a problem. 78, Caleb Hobbs is smoking. Looks like he's collected in whatever this incident was. See what happened. Oh, he got collected by William Davis. Let's go to helicopter because it's hard to see what happened. There we go. Here's a good angle. It's like he ran the corner a little wide and oh, he hit that guardrail. That guardrail just stuck out and 
killed the front end, and William Davis just decided to pile in the fun and runs in the back of that Ford Mustang of Caleb Hobbs. And both have some pretty significant damage. Hobbs is smoking, so that means the 12 will go to a backup car and will join his brother at the rear of the field. And I will have the official starting grid when we get to the race. As Scarlett Wallace with 27 seconds, unless Nathan Orman can pick up about three hundreds. I think our front row is set. So it'll be Scarlett Wallace, Nathan Orman on the front row. Good qualifying for both of them, especially that 41 team. They really needed a qualifying like that. Q-Man and David Heller, row two. Row three will be Jessica Shelton and her teammate CJ Bracken with the 15 having to go to the rear as qualifying is done. And then row number four is going to be the 19 of Jackie Tang and Carla Sanat. Row five, Bradley Ream and Allison Liera. So good qualifying for Bradley Ream as he'll start ninth. Row 6 will be Jesse Art and Ian Griffith. Row 7 will be Tori Gossett and Kate Anderson. Row 8 will be the 16 of Paul Minnick and the 45 of Daniel Witter. Of course, Minnick got his car repaired, so he will not have to drop to the rear of the field. And then Langland and uh, Jalicia Kuzman will make up row number 10. As we're coming to get the drivers to your cars, I'm going to flip it to uh, pit lane two as you get a nice look at the cars here. So look on down. Zachary Fitzwater uh, ended up 25th quickest, but he's probably going to be on the inside of, I believe it's going to be row number 11. So I think he'll start 21st because drivers who are going to the rear are the 15, the 3, the 78, um, the 12. So that is 4 as I look down the rest of the results and that's kind of it. So see a lot of names back here at the rear of the field like Remy Crampton in the 7, Cody McGorvick. They're going to have their work cut out. I see second in points did not have a good qualifying. That is Emmanuel Hart, and he'll start 32nd with those four drivers who have to go to the rear of the field. So not a good qualifying for a number of drivers high enough in points. And doesn't look like Sean Hart also had a good qualifying, but fortunately for him, he's going to gain four spots with those four I just documented going to the rear. Hope you enjoyed this qualifying session. Congratulations to Scarlett Wallace on the pole. The question is, can she turn that poll into a victory later this afternoon? You'll have to tune in to find that answer out. So until then, 